I appreciate your reporting. Now I want to bring in senior political commentators Matt Lewis, a senior contributor to the Daily Beast, and Charles Blow, op-ed columnist for the New York Times. Uh, welcome to the program, gentlemen. Charles, I'm going to start with you. I know you have a lot mm -hmm. to say about this. Uh, what do you make of, of the tweets of Donald Trump slamming such a highly respected civil rights leader? Uh, I mean, it, it's kind of lunacy on a lot of different levels. I mean, on, on, on the first is, you, you know, the, for Donald Trump to have the temerity to say to, Don, to uh, John Lewis that he is uh, all talk and no action. And this is a man who believes in his lifetime he's been arrested something like 45 times, the last being in 2013, a man who had his head, his skull fractured on Bloody Sunday. Uh, uh, the same year that Donald Trump received one of his five deferments uh, from the Vietnam War. And for that man to say to John Lewis, who has constantly thrust his body into the, the, the fight for justice and civil rights is just outrageous on its face. It is laughable. Uh, uh, Donald Trump doesn't even deserve to stand in the same room or in the shadow of John Lewis uh, when it comes to being able to put your body on the line, uh, to be terrorized, to be beaten, to be taken into custody. And really, I mean, what we have to remember, this is not like now. He, you could die. And many people did die. And John Lewis continued to do that work, even though Every time he was encountering those police officers, it was not in any way certain that he was going to survive. Right, and, had, and went to jail a number of times along with, with Dr. King. Matt, what's your take on this? What do, you, what do you make of this? Because Donald Trump, is he is bashing an icon who stood shoulder to shoulder with Dr. King. John Lewis is a hero. John Lewis put his life <laughs> and his body on the line. You know who else did? John McCain. Uh, and do you know what John Lewis called John McCain? He compared him to George Wallace. So I think that what's happening right now is sadly partisan politics. Um, I think it is utterly irresponsible to call this president illegitimate. There is absolutely no proof of that. When Donald Trump said that this election was rigged and illegitimate, I condemned him because it's utterly dangerous to say that, especially when there's zero evidence to prove it. And I just think that there could be some ramifications to this. You know, if you believe that the president's illegitimate, what ought you to do about that? I don't know what I don't know what the answer to that is. But um, look, Americans already have a problem right now. There's a distrust of institutions, of politicians. There's a lot of fear. There's a sense that we don't really know what's going on. John Lewis today uh, or yesterday, the other day, actually added to that cynicism and that confusion. Do you think that do you think this was a trap, Matt, that Trump fell right in? Absolutely. I think they set a trap. It's the timing, you know, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, day uh, is pretty obvious. And, and, and Trump took the bait. Um, that's bad politics. But I think that what Congressman Lewis did is actually bad for America. I think he's wrong on the merits. And I think uh, it's, it's irresponsible. Remember we had that, that, that fake news story about that pizza place and people were wondering, like, is something weird or bad happening at this pizza place and I better go check it out for myself? What are you supposed to do if you truly believe that the president of the United States is illegitimate? Well, I, think, I think for Congressman Lewis it's not to attend the inauguration. And I think that's, that's what he feels. And I think it's up to other Americans to decide that. Um, but I, I have to ask you the same question because, and you did, you did mention uh, John McCain as well. And let, we should not forget that Donald Trump also said, you know, he likes yeah. heroes who are not captured. Yeah. So he attacked John McCain as well. Um, it's an equal opportunity It's an equal offender. opportunity offender. Charles, saying illegitimate throws it right back to the whole birther movement. Does it, is that what people think about when no, they when I just they want to make sure. I want to make sure that I say on the record right now, right, it, with a clear conscience uh, and in full uh, access of my faculties, I too believe that Donald Trump is illegitimate because I know the meaning of that word, right? So there are two ways to look at illegitimacy. One is the legal uh, aspect of illegitimacy. Is it against the law? It is not against the law. He's the legal president of the United States. There was one way out of that, and that was... Uh, uh, through Electoral College, they decided that, they, that, that, that we're not going to take that. That's their business. That's the way it works. He's the legal president. That legitimacy is intact. 
There's another way to, design, to define illegitimacy, and that is when you do not conform to standard rules and practices of behavior. And the fact that two things happened that completely do not conform to our standards of practice and behavior, it was the Comey letter and it was the, the act of war, it was a cyber act of war, but it was an act of war by a foreign government attacking the integrity of our government, uh, of our election, and, to, and expressly to damage one candidate and benefit another. And we don't know if that was dispositive in the sense that we don't know the, 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 whether or not it meant that Donald Trump became elected, but we do know that Donald Trump thought that it was being helpful to him. And in fact, he encouraged Russia to continue to, to, to hack. And if they had more emails, he wanted to see them. And he continued to say over and over on the campaign trail that I love the WikiLeaks. He continued to quote from those WikiLeaks when he was giving campaign speeches. Charles so that means to me you believed, whether or not it was dispositive or not, you believed that it was helping you, that means that you are part of the illegitimacy that John Lewis, I assume, is referring to. Not that you're not the legal president, give, but you are not conforming I, to standards and principles. I want to give Matt a chance to respond to that before we have to go. Matt, I, go ahead. I don't think anybody serious does believe that it was dispositive. Uh, the Russians didn't cause Hillary Clinton to set up her own server. They didn't cause Hillary Clinton to decide not to campaign in Wisconsin. Um, but I think it's really dangerous to suggest that, look, America's been through a lot. You know, we had the 2000 election, for example, um, where obviously it came down to Florida. The Supreme Court ended up ruling. Um, we've had this birther issue, which I condemned. Um, I think Donald Trump was absolutely wrong, and he was irresponsible in that case. Why do we want to perpetuate this? What we need in America is, is not more division, it's more unity. I think that's actually the spirit of Dr. King. And I think that, that, that perpetuating the notion, this riles people up, we need to come together as Americans. You know, you may not like Donald Trump, you may not have voted for him, he is our president, this is our country, we should be rooting for his Matt, success. I have to ask you though. Yeah, but I, but I know, but I know the, the history tweet. of Dr. Hold, hold King, on, on, and Dr. Charles. King was if not uniting the, behind Bull Connor. If you can find the tweet from uh, Donald Trump from 2012, Charles, hold on one second. So I hear everyone saying we should come together. We should come together. This is one. No, you don't hear everybody saying really that. Great, I'm not right? saying that. In theory, it. it's, it's but it, that all sounds great in theory. But back in 2012, the day after Barack Obama won the election, put this tweet up. Donald Trump said, in a sense, I don't have it in front of me, I have to read it off a very tiny screen here. We can't let this happen. We should march on Washington and stop this travesty. Our nation is totally divided. Doing that in the midst of calling the president illegitimate not being born in this country. What is different now? Why should everybody come together now and they didn't, he didn't want people to come together in 2012? We Donald first, Trump. First of all, we shouldn't Donald mangle Dr. King's history. Number one, I'm going to stop right there. Can I? Matt. Can I no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. Let, this, will be, this will be, this will be Charles, quick. I'm going to give you the last quick. word. I want Matt um, to respond Donald to Donald Trump is we'll... a bad person. He should not have done that. But do two wrongs make a right? Yeah. If we care about this country, do we want to replicate the bad thing that Donald Trump did and said, well, they did it, so we're going to do it too? That's my argument. I was against Donald Trump when he was a birther. I was against Donald Trump when he said that, the election okay. was being rigged and it was illegitimate. Right. But now I'm against John Lewis because I think he's wrong about this one. Go ahead, Charles. Do not mangle Dr. King's legacy. Dr. King was not getting in line with George Wallace or, or Bull Connor. He was not getting in line with the racists. Dr. King was throwing his body into the breach and getting arrested some 29 times in his life. Dr. King was not saying you must unite behind someone who you believe is doing something wrong ever. He was telling America that you must stand up for right all the time and put yourself on the line if you have to do that. Okay. And, is Donald and, Trump Bull Connor? Is and, Donald Trump George Wallace? I think Do that's the Donald point. Trump is a lot of things. Let me, don't, you don't even want to get me started on all the ways that okay. I find Donald Trump to be offensive <laughs> in the we highest We only have world. limited time. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. Straight ahead, Donald Trump's preferred method of communication is by using Twitter, but many people, including foreign leaders, find it unnerving. Will he stop tweeting when he becomes president?